All right, so we're talking about random variables, and this is our first exercise in this section. And so let's jump right into it. So we've got two random variables on the space. So again, random variables are just measurable functions from some measure space into um, the Borel or on into the real line with the Borel sigma algebra. Um, and yeah, measurable functions. I don't think that's defined in this section, but in measure theory, a measurable fun a function from one measure space to another is measurable if the inverse image of any measurable set in the measure on the target space is, or in the codomain, whatever you want to call it, it, the inverse image of any measurable set there is a measurable set in the domain. Um, and so it looks a lot like the definition of a, hom a homeomorphism, no, homomorphism in topology, because in topology, homomorphism is a map between two to topological spaces where the inverse image of an open set in the target space is open in the domain. And so, yeah, I think I think in general, like these are all like in, in like a cata category theory sense. I think that measurable or like measurable functions are the morphisms in measure theory and um, homomorphisms are. Um, no, no, it is homeomorphism because group homomorphism is the group theory one. So homeomorphism. Yeah, that must be it. Whatever. I, I I forget the terminology. But yeah, that's the... Uh, um, homeomorphisms are the morphisms in the category of, to, of topologies in topological spaces, etc. So anyways, um, that's not really important here because we're not learning category theory. We are learning um, probability theory. Okay, so we've got this... Uh, Random, so we've got this function z, which we have defined, and we want to prove that's a random variable. So the first thing, well, it's a random variable on omega. So certainly z maps omega into r, because if we look at how z is defined, z is defined for lowercase omega, um, which is a part of the space capital omega. And so z itself is a function which is defined on omega, and at any point its um, value is determined by x of omega or y of omega. And x and y are both random variables, and so they map into r, and so z itself maps into r. Okay, so z is certainly, so it's a, um, it's a function which maps between the correct spaces, and now all we need is that and the inverse image of any Borel set in R is um, an element of the sigma algebra F on the space omega. So let B be some Borel measurable set on the real line. So what we need to prove is that the inverse image of this set is in the sigma algebra on omega. So let's prove that. Z inverse of B equals... Okay, so this is going to be... Uh, the all elements omega in space capital omega such that z of omega is in b. Okay, but we can write this as in two ways. So like for any, so this collection of elements omega, any element omega is either going to be in a or it's not going to be in a. And so this set is actually the set all w, all omega in a such that z of w is in b union all omega in a complement such that z of w is in b. Okay, but if um if w is it if omega is an a then we know what z of omega is it's equal to x of omega. So this is just omega in A such that x of omega 
is in B. Union, all omega, which is in A complement, such that x of, no, such that y of omega is in B. Okay, and now let's write out what these sets are. So the set of all elements omega, which are in A, and which are such that x of omega is in B. So, first of all, omega needs to be in x inverse of B. But omega also has to be in A. So we can write this as x inverse of B intersect A. Certainly these two sets are equal to each other. Um, I guess it's not 100% like immediate, but you can prove it. Like if any, any element which is in the first set has to satisfy, has to both be in x inverse of B and it has to be in A. And so, it's in, and so we have containment in one direction. Then if you take any element which is an x inverse of b and an a, um, then it satisfies the condition of the first. So I guess it is sort of automatic. But anyway, so you have this, and at the same time, we have y inverse of b intersected with a complement. Okay, but now look at all these sets. We have x inverse of b, y inverse of b, and a, and A complement are all elements of F. Certainly A is in F by assumption. A complement is in F because F is a sigma algebra and thus closed under, um, uh, uh, wow, I'm completely blanking, complements. Um, and then X inverse of B, of B and Y inverse of B are in F because X and, y, X and Y are random variables, which means that inverse images of Borel measurable sets are measurable in omega. And so now it's a, f is a sigma algebra, so taking unions and finite unions and finite intersections keeps you in f because that's how sigma algebras work. So we indeed have z inverse of b is in f. And this holds for any Borel set b and hence, z is a random variable on omega. And so yeah, really with this exercise, it's really just, I think, to get you used to the definitions of what th these things are, which I think is really helpful because, at least for me, I've never seen this definition of a random variable before, so it's still sinking in, I'm still processing it and everything, but being able to work through exercises like this helps cement it in your brain. Um, but yeah, this is all we need for this exercise, and so we are done.